I was lost in transition. 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 Coming from a sinner to a born again Christian. DLS, lost in transition. Coming from a sinner to a born again Yo, 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 it's your boy D to the L to the S, and welcome to Lost in Transition. Coming from a sinner to a born again Christian. See, I was dead up in my sin. Now that I'm born again, sometimes I feel like I'm struggling because I was lost in transition. Well, 2017, we are already here. We are already a couple of weeks in, and the subject I'm going to talk about is a subject that a lot of people deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. They hold on to this for minutes, hours, days, months, and years. And the subject is called unforgiveness. And you know me, I love to give the definition of things in order for you to get a better understanding about it. Here we go. Unforgiveness. A grudge against someone who has offended you. Not having any compassion to forgive. Sin that causes you to think and do evil. With that being said, I'm going to give you seven keys of unforgiveness. Number one, anger. Number two, bitterness. Number three, dwells on the offense. Number four, complaints. Number five, envious and jealous when angry. Number six, isolate yourself. Number seven, keeps record of the offense. I'm going ahead and break down each one very quickly. Anger. I also talked about anger in one of the classes that I do with Transparent Tuesday. And there are different stages of anger. You got Identity anger, dwelling anger, anger danger, and devil level. Sometimes when we get offended, we tend to be angry. We tend to hold on and hold on to that anger and that offense so much to where every time we think about it, we get angry. They could be like, well, such and such and such did this back in the day. You get angry. I mean, you go from zero to a hundred real quick because you thinking about it, because you didn't let that unforgiveness go of the offense. You get angry very, very, very fast. And it causes you to pretty much look like a fool because the person that offended you probably moved on, probably have a better life by then. They don't forgot about the situation, but you still hold it on to it, which causes you to stay angry. Number two, bitterness. That's another thing that you got to let go. You got to let go of that bitter heart because of the fact that it can also tear you up. Like, you can be, the person that offends you, they can be moved on, have a better life, they have a good job, they have a family, whatever. And you are still bitter behind that situation. You start talking about them a lot. You start running their name through the dirt because you better. You ain't you did not let go of that unforgiveness which caused you to be angry. Now you bitter. You bitter about the situation and you start dragging people along with you. Hey, people don't want to hear all that stuff. They be trying to tell you to go to make amends with that person, but the bitterness keeps you talking about it. Running their name through the dirt, being all salty and things when their name gets mentioned up or the situation gets mentioned up. You gotta let that go. Number three, the whales on the offense. I mean, I dealt with that in my life as well. I dwelled on the offense for like five to seven years because I did not let it go. I had that unforgiveness in my heart. I mean, it's a, another term called ruminate. I ruminated on it so much that I had dreams about the offense. I'll be just at work and I see a little vision about the offense and, and the person's name just made me angry. And it just, I just keep on going crazy about the offense because I didn't let it go and it causes me to dwell on it. You got to let that go too. Number four, complaints. Imagine yourself being in front of a group of people, y'all talking about a situation. 
and it gets mentioned up and you start complaining every single time every time they come around you you complain about their offense or that person every single time and then it gets to the point to now they want to be around you they're like man every time i come around this person i always talking about this other person of the offense that happened seven or eight years ago and you still talking about it man as soon as they see you they be like hey i'm gone i see you i see you tomorrow or something also even if you work with them people you in the lunch break you still talking about it they're gonna be like you know what they'll be sitting on the other side of the uh lunch room somewhere and you'll be pretty much by yourself because you complain about the situation a lot because you didn't let it go. You gotta let that go as well. Number five, envious and jealous when angry. You start dwelling on it so much, you get all that anger built up. And not all, not not only you don't be uh, envious and jealous of that situation or how they're living now, you also be like that in other people's lives. You just envious and just jealous for no reason. If anybody even reminds you of that person, you just get angry, you get envious, and you get jealous. I found myself, I found myself going through that and it hurt me because of the fact that I did not move forward. I stayed backwards. I tried to move up one step, but when I started dwelling on that unforgiveness and that envious and jealous, when I was angry, I took like four or five steps back and was wondering why am I not moving forward? Because I was holding on to that. And what I'm saying to you is, you got to let that go. Number six, isolate yourself. Just, just think about it. When you complain a lot to people, they're not going to be around you. They're going to be telling you, Straight up. Man, I ain't trying to hear that today. All you do is talk about the same old situation and you're not doing anything about it. And you isolate yourself because of the fact that you're thinking in your head, oh, they don't understand me. They don't know what I've been through. And they try to tell you good advice. But you listening to the enemy and he's telling you negative and wrong advice. The Bible says that an uh, idle mind is the devil's workshop. You having an idle mind, just focus on you, yourself, and you. Me, myself, and I. You isolate yourself away from the world, and you get towed up every time. The enemy gets into your head, you let that negativity sink into your heart, then you start saying that mess out of your mouth. And you wonder why you're alone. And don't allow people to isolate you too. Because even as, even as far as couples, that happens a lot. Some person might have got offended by something else that happened to their significant other or spouse. And they try to isolate them away from everybody. Say, well, don't nobody understand you. It'll just be me and you against the world. That is some nonsense because you need people in your life. You cannot isolate yourself because you cannot walk in this world alone. You got to let that go too. Number seven keeps record of the offense that goes back that to that dwelling. You keep that record. And you talk about it all the time. You eat, sleep, and you breathe that offense. You, you do all that to that person and wonder why God is not blessing you because of the fact that you're holding on. You, you keep it on to it. God wants you to let that stuff go, but you're holding on to it. You gotta let it go. You can't keep that record. Because if God don't even keep the record of your own offense, why should you? When you do stuff like that, you think you're better than God. You think you're bigger than God because you're doing something that he doesn't even do. If he don't keep that record of your offense, why should you? And I'm going to go ahead and go to the scripture in John 20 and 23. The word of God says, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. How can God forgive you if you have an unforgiving heart? God forgives you on a day-to-day -day basis. But every situation, but everything that you do, any sin that you committed, He forgiven you already for it. And you can't even forgive your brother and sister for something that's small. So, holy God, what you did is big. But he doesn't see it as big. 
He also don't even, I mean, he wipes it away. He wipes your slate clean. You have a fresh start every day, but you have to forgive and you cannot go another day, another hour, another minute, and another second with unforgiveness. And with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and give you the seven keys of forgiveness. Do not be stubborn. Let go of your anger. Stop thinking of yourself as a victim. Focus on the future. Relearn to trust. Be reasonable in your expectations of others. Expect that it will take time to forgive. I'm going to say that again. Expect that it will take time to forgive. I don't know. And you got to be reasonable in your expectations of others. Don't And you try to hold a person to a high standard, people are going to fail you every time. You just got to know exactly who you are. And here's the quote. I do not forgive people because I'm weak. I forgive them because I am strong enough to understand that people will make mistakes. I'm going to say that one more time. I don't forgive people because I am weak. I forgive them because I am strong enough to understand that people will make mistakes. Yo, it's your boy D to the L to the S. I hope this bless you. Holla. Peace.